Gemini 5 was launched on August 21st, 1965 at 2 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 19 at Cape Canaveral. It carried astronauts Gordon Cooper and Pete Conrad for a planned eight-day mission which would take the world record from the Soviets for the first time. After this mission, the Soviet Union reclaimed the record in 1970 with Soyuz 9, then Pete Conrad led the first Skylab mission to take the record back for the United States in 1973, and finally the Soviet Union took the record back and Russia retained it since with the Salyut 6, 7 and Mir missions. Pete Conrad was originally slated to make the first EVA instead of Ed White, but after Alexei Lyanov nabbed the first EVA for the Soviets, that part of the mission was given to Gemini 4 and Ed White. Conrad didn't mind the long duration mission instead though. You see, he had originally applied for the first astronaut group like Gordon Cooper had, but unlike Cooper, Conrad got rejected and only got in with the second group. It may have had to do with his fun-loving style. His motto was, if he can't be good, be colorful. What really annoyed him though was that the psychologist had determined that Conrad couldn't endure for long periods in the confines of a spacecraft in space. So this mission was just the thing to set the record straight. Besides, Conrad liked to set records, aiming for the mission altitude record on Gemini 11 and then reclaiming the duration record on the first Skylab mission. Conrad also had a pattern of lightning hitting his spacecraft and killing electrical systems. On Gemini 5, that happened on the pad while they were sitting for a launch attempt on the 19th, and they had to scrub for two days. But during Apollo 12, it happened again, but that time during the flight. Gemini 5's main productive goal, aside from numerous science experiments and Earth observations, was to perfect different types of rendezvous maneuvers, and it packed twice the maneuvering fuel as Gemini 4 did. It also had a special rendezvous evaluation pod that was released on its second orbit. However, four hours into the mission, the fuel cells had a drop in oxygen pressure, and Cooper had to shut them down as a precaution. Without the fuel cells, Gemini could only stay in orbit for a day. He ultimately tried the fuel cells again and tested them with various loads, and it seemed like they were stable, allowing the astronauts to continue the mission. Gemini 5 had the distinction of being the first time astronauts wore a mission patch. Gemini 4 was the first mission to feature an American flag on the suits, but after being told that they couldn't name their spacecraft, the crew of Gemini 5 still wanted to customize their mission a bit. So they secretly came up with a mission patch with a cost of the wagon and the motto 8 days or bust on it. NASA Administrator James Webb opposed the idea when told about it, but the rebellious pair went ahead anyway, sewing the patches onto their suits and only telling Webb two days before the mission. Webb conceded, but said that they should cover up the model until the end of the mission just in case they didn't make the 8 days. Technically, they were in orbit short of 8 days, a mission duration of 7 days and nearly 23 hours, but nobody held it against them and they revealed their motto triumphantly. NASA subsequently allowed crews to design patches, subject to administrator approval. This would be Gordon Cooper's second and final space mission. Though he was a backup commander on Apollo 10 and therefore slated to be commander of Apollo 13, NASA administration had frustrations with him racing cars and otherwise endangering himself, and the return of Alan Shepard to the flight roster caused a reshuffling of the lineup that led Cooper to be sidelined, and he left NASA shortly after. This was Pete Conrad's first mission, and he would go on to three further missions. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Gemini 5.